Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here, along with my good friend, Ari. Say hi, Ari. Hello. He's going to help give color commentary and advice as we play this episode of Strategic Command World War One, And this is our um, East Front First uh, campaign. So, um, let's see. Let's start... Well, let's look here from where we are. Um, can we reinforce? No, we can't. No, we're not going to stupidly attack. There, these guys are all reinforced down here. Now, again, I think most of our attacks are useless here. I do want to look before we end the turn at what we're doing here. If there's anything that looks profitable, it doesn't really. No. They will be. Oh, we have six, six, six for resources. If you for don't mind me asking, are there? Uh, I know that like, like the French have their special corps in Legion, but are there like extremely special corps? You know, like famous corps, like the Harlem Hellfighters in this. In this game, no, not that I know of. Not that that wouldn't be a bad thing, but um. I think it'd be interesting to see. Well. You have to look a lot uh, with things like this as to the um, scale of those forces. Are they, you know, really, really within the scale of what we're looking at, um, as in unit sizes? That's sort of what I, I often feel I need to... To see about because if you're looking at there's a, there were a lot in World War One, World War Two, and other things a um, what often called legions because they don't necessarily fit in the um, division regiment or even core um, well, unit skills. The 369th infantry was a regiment. It right. Was, uh, dealt with. Uh, Minorities, and it was probably the most famous American regiment there was in the war. Right now, in the war right now, that is. yeah, and the um, the 369th, and there was the 69th division that I think at least they thought of themselves as a rather special um, in World War One. Um, but you gotta have to look, this is sort of a core based game, and a detachment here is really sort of like a d division level scale, so. You know, how much does that really fit in on, you know, putting on, on the map? Because that really makes it a um, a weak unit if it's not added to something larger. Okay, I want to make sure I'm holding. Okay, we can... Um, that's starting to... We can move over. I don't know. I'm worried a little bit about partisans here. Can you also uh, upgrade infrastructure in this? No, there gonna... there is no um, non-event. There are some events that happen that will change some of the infrastructure, but nothing that is um, non-event, meaning just by paying some resources. I'm looking for units that we may need to, I should have done this before starting, we may need to or could upgrade or reinforce hmm do we push there do we push up there okay well these guys moved to these guys moved to here this artillery can get one closer they could be reinforced very usefully. Important of the artillery up. Okay. Now, ooh, our hunted submarines. We're gonna let them be hunted. Or Hiding still a little bit longer. I'm sort of hoping for um, 
an offensive here with multiple submarines at once to be a little more useful. Okay, and for pro. Okay, um, I want to look at research for Austro Hungary. Okay, trench warfare, we're coming along. We're doing that. We're doing a little, a little farther along. Germany's a little behind on this, which it wasn't in World War I, I would say. Wouldn't you sort of say, Ari, that Germany was probably the leading in trench warfare development? Oh, yeah, the Germans uh, took great pride in their trench network. Yes, so... Um, that is an important thing. Let's see, I'm trying to... Do you see a tech that we should maybe focus on here for either Germany or Austria? I feel like, uh, hmm. Let me see here. Okay, like... Maybe gas and shell production. Hmm, okay. Uh, unless you don't want to go the gas route, that is. Well, I don't know if there's a... <sighs> for an in-game, I don't know if there's a negative... Okay, increases your artillery supply shells by one per friendly turn. Yeah, because it's also gas and shell production, so I think we will do that. Unless yeah, we'll... you just want to upgrade your artillery weapons by out or something like that. Well, we've done a little bit of that, I think. Artillery weapons are level one of two possible levels, so that's pretty good. Now for... Austria, I don't know what more they could really afford. Let's let's look at production here. Okay, what um Germany core right now? Because when I if I were to lose a core, the next. I feel like uh, if you could go to Turkey, uh, are you researching mobility? Oh, that might be an interesting. Let's see, Turkey. Um, well, we have to look at the um. Uh, Mention mobility at the Desert War or the sub. Oh, mobility. Um, mobility increases action points of HQs, all infantry units except for garrisons, Marines, anti aircraft of all types, and all. That might be pretty useful for. Might Ottomans. be useful for a lot yeah, of them. A lot of. Yeah, it would be useful for you Germans invading Russia, but more importantly, the Ottomans okay. have to deal with the mountains and the deserts. Yes. We'll do that. Uh, let's. It also helps because you can't spawn them near the east, and you have to move them along the rail for like halfway and walk the rest of the distance. Right. Okay. Let's just make sure we've got these guys all moved, because like you say, we've got. I just was wanted to check. Okay. So we're let's get back to purchasing here for Germany, because we can definitely purchase something, and probably should. Okay, torpedo boats. Hmm, Are they any use you think or not? Or mm. these are the World War One types. These aren't the World War Two motor torpedo boats. Oh, trust me, if it was the LS, then just be in charge of the Navy. Right. But I don't know if the British naval bombers are going to be real. I was thinking more maybe heavy bombers. Okay, heavy bombers. Because you can't really bring any more cores up to Germany unless you want to move to the east. Right. Okay, um, attack values, just looking here. Not really much attack values, though. Mm. Yeah, I think maybe we... I guess they're gonna need some research at some point. But yeah, I think I think day. I think we we should research them first before maybe pushing those. Um, don't know how useful anti-air. Anti-air for now, I'm pretty sure it's just artillery. Yeah, it's probably not all that great. Okay, um, I don't know, um,
Let's do a couple of detachments for Germany here. Oh, you can also uh, do stuff for Bulgaria, I guess. I don't know if they can. Yeah, we can build it. We can build as Bulgaria. Um, hmm. Yeah. Um. Do they have artillery left? That might be worthwhile. Is it? I think recon bombers would be good. Because recon bombers, although they don't do very much in the attack, they um, help up follow, follow on attacks really well. So um, mm -hmm. that yeah, would get be a good. recon bomber from Bulgaria, then get some heavy bombers for Germany, and then you can smash Athens. Yeah, um, I think we're just going to do that. Let's see. Of course, artillery might be better. Yeah, well, if I had our if I had our free artillery, which no, we do for Austria, but that's three hundred. Well, that's a lot. Okay. Um, and again, their attack values for Austria are not very, very good. Um, you know, let's see about improving the Austrias. Maybe we should do that to the German navy as well. Okay, maybe I should have done some more because we've had recent and more operations now against. Um, this battleship, let's go, um, what would be two, okay, and this heavy cruiser, no, we can't, they just came into port, probably, um, Oh, this dreadnought up here. There we go. Now, down rebuilding the Austrian Navy here. Uh, I should have already built your stuff. But what was that? I'm thinking now. A little louder, please. Maybe louder. I'm thinking perhaps now. I know you already built a couple of things here and there, or in production queue, but maybe more cavalry for the Eastern Front, uh, especially up north where you have like... Yeah, um, I'm sure it would be useful. Um, Okay, that's getting better. What we don't really have here is I'm noticing I think they probably sunk Wait. them all. Can't dreadnoughts do swarm but barm? Um they are they very well may be able to. Uh no, I'm pretty sure they can. That was uh, yeah, I was moving up here to do some shore bombardments to get to Russia and I ran, ran into the Russian Navy. So yes, they can. Um Maybe you can send out an Austrian ship to try to bombard the Italian front. Okay, well, just so that you know, um, we have the Italian destroyer here. Every time I've sort of tried to get out, break out of the um, Adriatic Sea, I get hammered by the Italian and, and other navies. More up north where they border the sea. Yeah, but down, yeah. down here, down near Corfu has been a problem to get out. Very big problem. So I think I want to pur purchase another destroyer for Austria. What would that cost me? 175. Yes, we want to do that because they'll help us. Um, so we have a well. Okay, we have two destroyers coming. Good one. Well, the one we just got is still far away. Okay. Give me another dreadnought. We have those. Okay. And nothing coming for Turkey. Okay. Close. I think that is where we're going to leave production now. Um. Yeah, I guess I'm more or less liking where we are. Um, yeah, we'll look at some more cavalry next turn. Okay, um, let's just save this just in case we spot something that we should have done. Okay, um, don't know when I'm going to be able to stop 
worrying about Gallipoli and a possible invasion, but we need to take out Greece first, I think. Okay, that's good. So let's end the turn and see what damage they do to us. We could try to mine the waters. Yeah, um, we just got to get some destroyers to capture of Salonika boost Austro-Hungary's national morale. Loss of Minsk reduces Russian national morale. Okay, Chief of General Staff Eric von Falkenhayen. An Irish man called Roger Casement is willing to take a, consign a large consignment of arms to Ireland to equip nationalist and republican groups who are planning a rising against British rule there. He asks 25 MPP to fund this venture. It will be a risky mission, but if Casement managed to deliver the arms of the rising is successful, then it will prove to be an important blow against their enemy. Would you like to authorize payment to Sir Roger Casement? What do you think about this, Ari? Well, this is the Easter Rising movement. Yeah, that's what I'm understanding. Um, I just didn't know if you had any more insights than... Well, it would definitely bring a distraction among Britain. I don't know how many uh, would rise up against them. I don't know if it's going to be one court or more. I don't know if they're going to defend Ireland that much. They might be able to take Dublin or something like that. Right. Okay, I think we will do this. We will... We will put in 25. It's not that much, and there's a chance of it. Yeah. So. I think it'll, pro I'm guessing it'll put a partisan unit on the map. That's what I'm guessing. Okay. Um, Chief of General Stash, the Bolsheviks in Finland are gaining strength and threaten to overthrow the forces of law and order led by General Mannerheim. Major General von der Goltz therefore proposes to lead an expedition to Finland to assist Mannerheim's forces in battle against the Reg, but standing it will cost us 75 MPP. With Mannerheim securely in control of Finland, we would then be able to commence trading with that country, therefore economic benefit in the long run could outweigh the initial cost of the expedition. Would you like to authorize General von der Goltz's expedition to Finland? Do you have any info on this? I don't. Well... Now, many people know that while the Russian Civil War was going on, Finland itself was also in a civil war between the Red Guards and the, well, it was the Red Finns and the White Finns, really. I'm pretty sure they might have been called Guards, but it's more of a Russian thing. Uh, and as it says, obviously, Dieter Mannenheim uh, brought order to it all. You know, he's the best general of the uh, East. Uh, well, he's basically the George Washington of Finland. Pretty much. I mean, he uh, smacked the Soviets around a good couple. That's yeah. for sure. Okay, so this is why, you know, this is sort of, because when I play, Wait Wait. I, you know, I was thinking earlier today, sorry, sorry, I'm cutting you off here a moment, Eric. When I was thinking earlier today why I got sort of involved in history and things like tanks and other things when I was really young, and a lot of other kids, obviously boys, at least for the 99.9% .9 of the population, and they're going to be boys. I got really more into all of this than a lot of um, fellow kids at the time. And I think it was because I played war games. And to them, history was just boring dates, boring facts, boring whatever. But since I was actively playing these things, you know, whether it's tabletop war games, you know, with miniatures or, you know, um, board game type miniatures, Sort of like what we're playing now, but on on a again on a on a board instead of a um, computer screen. I really got in, interested into sort of the what ifs of history and wanting to research and read more about it. Now, so I often you know, like for World War Two, the what if for me is Germany because we already know how how could America win World War Two? Oh well, we could just look at the history and see how they won it. I mean, so now we could maybe how to do it better or whatever, absolutely. But the what ifs is what could Germany have done? And, you know, we can look at like what what could Japan, Japan have done to win the Pacific War? Oh, absolutely nothing because there's no possible way for them to win. So um, that is sort of a, um, you know. I mean, uh, the Japanese Admiral said if they didn't win the war in like, I think it was six months, they would lose the war. Yeah, that's um oh um uh Yamamoto. I, I, you know, I think it was like eighteen months of of rampaging around or something. He said, and that's basically what they had. But you see, if you're looking at doing a, you know, Japan, 
defeated a couple of Russian Far East expeditions in the Russo-Japanese War. That was, before going into China, that was Japan's one and only major war. And they defeated the Far East expeditions of Russia. You know, everything out past the, um, oh, I forget the name of that big lake out there, um, Lake Baikal, I think. Everything east of that, that's just sort of, you know, really frontiers-ish for Russia, even to this day. You know, it's not the heartland of Russia. There is no possible way Japan could, excuse me, conquer Russia. Just, just, it is just a, an impossibility. Now, they could be part of a grand coalition that could push in from their side and do a lot, absolutely, but they, they alone can't. So they can't defeat Russia in the Russo-Japanese War. But Russia sends out its fleet all the way almost the other side of the globe. And then it got completely decimated. Yeah, it gets decimated. Okay. But there was no ability for, say, Japan to send a fleet. Really, Japan could not have sent a fleet to the Baltic. You know, and you know, destroy Russia's ability to maybe build new ships or something. Well, the, the thing though, it wasn't Japan's interest to take Europe; it was their interest to take China. Right. Well, no, but this this was my point is. Also, it, it would be kind of stupid for Japan, who's already limited in resources, to sell all the way around the Baltics. Right, and, uh, but already frozen help. But if you looked at it from the perspective of um, a total war, who's going to be left standing, Russia? or Japan at the end? Who would be standing? It would be Russia, because Russia could raise more armies, build more fleets, buy more fleets, whatever, and keep coming at Japan. Well, the problem is, they kept doing that. They brought more men. Russia had a lot of men, and yet they still couldn't really beat the Japanese. Yeah, they, they, saying, yeah but, but Japan I, couldn't... No, 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 don't get me wrong. Japan would never be able to fully defeat Russia, right. but I don't think Russia would be able to defeat Japan. Because well, and and and, and you and you may be true there because, you, and you're mostly true there. I think may, mainly because of um, long lines of supply for Russia, and Russia's really not a naval power uh, to build supply. But so if Japan, if, so Japan thinks it can fight a limited war with America, meaning sink the American fleet, take a few colonies, and go, hey, yeah, we've won. Let's sign a peace gre peace treaty, you know, and, and end it. That, they didn't have Theodore Roosevelt negotiating the peace, and also it was uh, them versus America, not so many. Right. Oh, well, absolutely. But but so what I'm saying is, is there's no way for Japan to win. So I'm always interested in the what ifs. Okay. So. so personally, my biggest what is if uh, what if uh, the Romanovs were able to stay in power and won the civil war? What if the civil war never happened to begin? Right. Now, see, in this game here, we already have something of a civil war going on in Russia, but we did not send Lenin. So I, you know, I have to wonder what would it, what is the what if, and a sort of viewpoints what ifs. Um, so we're not supporting Red Guards, excuse me. They may rise up of one form or another, but we're not going to support them because I'm looking at this from a long term perspective as Germany, not as something else. That yes, we want to defeat um, Romanov Russia. But we don't necessarily want to destroy Romanov, Russia. So there's there's a difference there. So we're we're going to go with um, supporting von der Goltz because it is expensive. One, one, one thing I can understand is though, Finland well shouldn't exist that right now, or at least Finland in the actual. Oh okay, well, well the reason it reason it exists now is because we have pushed so much further ahead in invading Russia than Germany did at this point, and it's I think was triggered because of. Um, Russian uh, losses. I'm a little mixed about that. Well, it's the way the 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 team at um, uh, Fury Software has decided. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it's what they've decided. So we're going to go with this. We're going to spend it, which is going to put me in a bit of a deficit. General von der Goltz and Mannerheim defeat the Bolsheviks' forces in Finland. Very good. Nice little photo there. Does that mean they're a free and independent nation now? I don't know, and they may be joining us. UK rises more troops through conscription. Okay, the second Anzac Corps arrives in England. Serbian partisans rise against occupation forces. I thought they might. Oh, Christina. Arabs rise against the Ottomans. Okay, good thing we're moving our horsey troops around. 
Okay, the Entente. Okay, blocking Germany. War Entente blocking North Sea. German forces surrender in Cameroon. Yeah, they didn't have much of a chance there. German Socialist Party expels 18 MPs for voting against the war. So they need to be national socialists, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, wonder how that's going to go in the future. Fighting breaks out when Pancho Villa raids U.S. territory. What was that, Ari? Uh, unless they're the Bavarian communist. Well, yeah. Um, there was one and only one engagement in which they, um, which uh, the, U the U.S. goes after Pancho Villa after Pancho Villa raids in U.S. territory. And the U.S. sends, of course, General Blackjack Pershing down there to um, to intervene into Mexico. And they marched around for a long time looking for them. But there was if one... I remember right, Mexico is in the Civil War right now, aren't they? Yes, well, they have been for... Hmm, since, well, the American Civil War, at, yeah, at one level or another, um, since then, so since the 1860s, when um, the uh, Europeans invaded and then the mm, dealings with all of that fell out. And I would definitely say Pancho Villa was a um, guerrilla bandit. It was somewhat political, somewhat banditry. It's sort of a bit of both. So yeah, so they, so they sent down a large force and there was one engagement in which there was casualties um, uh, in that um, thing, in that invasion, that expedition. Do you know? Do you know at all the story of that, Ari? I'm not a huge expert. Okay, um, I'll, I'll tell the story. It's, it's given me the chance to. Um, it was the first motorized engagement, and boy, I wish I had the article in front of me right now. Um, first motorized engagement of the U.S. Armed Forces. There was this young um, lieutenant who had a very famous father, very famous father, who had won the um, uh, Congressional Medal of Honor in um, World War, or no, not World War, obviously, um, in the American Civil War. Father or grandfather? Grandfather, I don't know. So, yeah, um, I think, yeah, I think I... Uh, no. I, nah, I don't remember. I don't, maybe I'm confusing the, 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 the Medal of Honor winner father with another guy. But this young lieutenant's there, and I think it's two, um, I think they were Model T cars that they were driving around in and um, racing around searching for bandits, and they got a tip and raced into a, um, an area and had a, a gunfight. And I think it was two or three Mexican bandits were killed, and he brought them back basically draped across the hood of the car. And the punchline of the story is the name of the young lieutenant who does the motorized engagement uh, racing into deep into Mexico. I mean, they, would, they were all deep into Mexico, but racing around doing reconnaissance was George S. Patton. Patton's first combat engagement was um, done and it was done with less than a squad of men and he was one of the people personally shooting his pistol I don't know if he if they confirmed that he was one of the kills of that um, also I think it was a silver or a bronze medal Patton had earlier or um, taken in the in the Olympics in pistol shooting so that he was that good of a shot with pistols he was a uh, an Olympic medalist with pistol shooting okay so yeah, so we, okay, we've dumped in, um, oh, it looks like we're now getting um, MPP coming in from Finland up there, 17 for spring, it'll probably change off in winter to lower, um, but our Finnish expedition cost us 75, so that does that. So in the long run, we'll probably get more than 75 back. What's interesting to me, somewhere around here on the German border, either whether it be uh, the Russian or Italian or French front, there's a person between it, Irvin Rommel, giving orders. Yes, I've read his Infantry Attack book several times.
I used to keep it in the car with me. So after reading it once, I kept it in the car. And so whenever I was like, oh, I don't know, waiting to get tires changed on the car at a tire shop or something like that, I'd pull that book out and read it. So I've read it at least twice fully. Highly recommend it to anyone. And yes, I'm sure it is a um, book that makes Rama look good. You know, mean uh, not that it specifically lies in it, but just you know, take everything in his sort of um, make him you know in his viewpoint make him look good compared to others around I mean, it him. Was World War, well, did he write that uh, between wars? Uh, yeah, he wrote it between wars as um, various things, very... including. Including during trying to get promoted. A, during that time, he wasn't necessarily a bad guy. It was only later when he joined the bad guys. If that makes sense. Well. Yeah. Okay, we lose to it. I don't think Irwin was really that much of a political person. Well, you, we can barely hear you with the noise, so either speak really loud or no one's going to hear you. Um. The army tries to say in Germany that it's not political, um, but, and if you mean by it's not party politics in a general sense, of what's the tax rate going to be and where are we going to build the bridge? I mean, you know, like, uh, Irwin didn't really follow, uh, Mr. Mustache Man's ideology close hand. He was more of just a commander wrapped up in a rock. Yeah, I know, but you got to remember he was in charge of Hitler's bodyguard for a while and was really buddy buddy with Hitler personally. And then Hitler shot him. Well, that was after supposedly um, a Rommel trying to assassinate Hitler, you know, or being involved in the plot. So, yeah. But yeah. Sort of interesting if you think about it. Almost every again, much much louder. Or you're not going to be heard. It's interesting if you think about it. Almost every uh, high-ranking or interesting character from World War II in Germany served in World War One. Well, yeah, and it's that it's just sort of and it's with um with all the nations. Um, Eisenhower served in World War One. You know, um, Truman, who you know, U.S. president, served in. World War One. Um, it just because of the the generational gap to be a general, basically in World War Two, you needed to have at least been a lieutenant or something in World War One. You can look at like um, Albert Kesselring, was, the Luftwaffe uh, commander. He was an artillery general in World War One. That doesn't look like we're going to survive. No. Pretty sure also Charles was in World War One, wasn't he? Charles? French general. Yeah. De Gaulle? Oh, of course, De Gaulle. De Gaulle. Yeah. Oh, of course he was. Yeah. No, just just functionally about everybody who's a general in World War Two was there in World War One as as an officer. It just it's sort of the generations that need to sort of make that up. I don't know if I already said this once before, but I sort of find it ironic that they put a monarchist in charge of the Weimar Republic. Well, no, they, they did that on purpose. Did they really? Well, I know the people voted for him because the people absolutely love Hindenburg. But, too. Well, it was... You know, it was, it was definitely part of the, you know... Um, plan, I would say, to um, why they picked who they picked uh, for German leadership in the as president. Because you got to remember, even a lot of the socialists were um, monarchists in Germany. Uh, it was um, Bismarck who started the social security system for setting that up in Germany way back when. And so they've had a long, long history of 
and the rest in the Midlands, of social reform, shall we say, coming in in Germany from the elites. And so not it, it's really hard for me to tell who who is sort of a a social progressive. Now they want to the goal of socialism is um uh communism, quoting Lenin. Uh so they want to get there eventually, but there's a lot of social progressive look at it as many generations slow progression towards it but they do want to get to communism anyways but so in the meantime they're not upset with the idea of a um oh we're talking too long okay um lost 10 they lost 10 okay so or nine okay so we look took about 30 mpp off with submarine okay another german submarine and you can't put them down in the adriatic no okay let's Put them out here. And there's that core. Hmm. Uh. hmm. I feel like maybe the explosion in Germany wouldn't have been as huge if they just put uh, Wilhelm III in charge. Well, that was politically impossible, I think, partially in America as well as other places. Um, okay, we did lose a core out here, and I am suffering a little bit from loss of core, so I guess we're going to stick him here. Okay, so that gets our deployment here. Now we're going to again save this. Okay, mostly for misclicks, not just because we don't like the outcome of things. Yeah, well, hmm. I don't know if moving is useful. Let's see if we can reinforce him. That's good. Now, let's... Okay, horses ride through the desert. We need to... Now we can get across the sands. I guess to there. Okay, main core. Hit the camels. We don't want them to let them take Medina or Mecca, but we want to get them as soon as possible there. Okay, they're basically bottled up. No, we're not attacking there. Any, no, we can't go across that straight. Can we go across this straight? don't think so. But we can take Corfu. So we're going to do that. That should get um, more supply and everything cut off. I know during the peace deal, like uh, the British, uh, one of the British big three, I uh, think it's like David something, David George. Well, that's Lloyd George's the the. Lloyd George. okay, well, we both go something like. Uh, uh, had Jesus Christ to the left of me and uh, Napoleon to the right or something. Well, that no, well, no, that's um, uh, yeah, yeah, Lloyd George referring to um, what is it, the Ladier of um, France, and uh, Jesus Christ is Wilson, that you know his idealism. Okay, we're going to see if we can crush these guys. That looks like the best first hit. Oh, very good. Oh, didn't quite take them down. Okay. Well, at least they haven't gone very far, and we're pushing well into Greece. Okay, well, maybe a naval adventure can be something that's done. I don't know. Mm, can't take out that submarine from shore, damn. Okay, it is a submarine, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. Well, we can bomb them. Yeah, let's bomb them. Submarine dies from attack, okay. Oh, and we did a little bit of damage. Very good.
Damn, we can't even get to there. Well, we can reinforce him now, so we'll do that. You know, you have Bulgaria building that recon, don't you? Yeah, but it's going to be a while. Austria, well, Austria could build a maritime bomber, so that could be useful. Yeah, that could. I'm just wondering if we can get across here. Okay, well. I mean, you could land in Sparta. I'm pretty sure they have someone in Africa. Okay, there's some destroyers. I'll kill this Italian destroyer. Ouch. Oh shoot, we went to through the damn landmine or sea mines. Okay, well. Um well, at least clears those out. Didn't sink them, so that's a good thing, I guess. Yeah, they've moved. Well, mm, no, I want to get you back to a port. Now let's, we're going to go oh, hunting mode. Let's get you back up to a port. We're going to repair you, hopefully. And we bumped into a heavy cruiser. Well, let's move to that port. Well, we found a heavy cruiser. And a dreadnought. Oh, goody. Oh, goody. Ah, uh, no, we're not going after the dreadnought or that, no. Okay, see, this is sort of my problem, areas you see trying to move in, even the Adriatic for Austria has been painful. Okay. And yes, a maritime bomber would be helpful, but... They're not yet overwhelming. Okay, well, Italy did a nice job and sent us another unit here uh, um, for us to decide to shoot at some more. Um, well, let's... These are fighters. Okay, so no, we don't want to do a ground attack with the fighters. Now, over here, I think we could... Bombard him. He's out of range, so we're going to move him up just for the future. Okay. Um, yeah. Now we're going to reinforce him. Now just to that, I guess. And I guess we're going to, um, well. Um, yeah, he's not entrenched, so we want to entrench him. And yeah, that looks like a good path. He's also not entrenched, I think. Yeah. You could cut down the Italian front line a little bit if you just moved him to that province in the north. With the You're Germany talking coast. here? Uh, well, the stream's a little bit delayed. But yeah, I'm well, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you time to look here. Here? Uh, where the cursor is? No. If it's in, oh yeah, right there. Yeah, no. Um, you can see. Yeah, I can, but um, it's actually rather um, going to be a low supply area level. I don't think it's a good idea. Um, I'm going to focus a little more here. I know what you're saying, but it's, it's somewhat deceptive, as I would say. Um. 
Oh, there's none of these. Okay, well, we're gonna hit here. Now we're gonna swap that out. Well, that isn't going to go well. That'll go better. What about the plane south of it then? Well, we, we, I, I don't want to surround this unit. I don't want them to have too many places to hit me from. And right now, I'm really well more approved to just say, um, doing more damage to them than they do to me. Didn't quite take him out, but, um,. I would like to get um, Torrento back over here. Um, so, and we just need to get some of these forces a little better organized. Okay, now to the Western Front, to the Western Front. Okay, we have some artillery, some heavy artillery, railway type stuff. So we're going to pound him. Now we're going to save that. Defensive artillery, which is not what I wanted, but ooh, but they got slaughtered. Okay, swap those out, and swap those out. That maybe will kill them. Okay, shatter the British core. Very good. That's good. Yeah, this will allow me to fully reinforce them. That's going to be a point of attack. We're going to reinforce these guys. That'll be a point of attack here. They will definitely. That I know we're spending a lot. Okay. Now I want to come up and look at Finland. Do we have any control? No, we have no control or knowledge of what's going on in Finland. Let's move these guys around here to look for that Russian navy that was around. Well, I don't see it. Okay, maybe it went somewhere else. Hmm, interesting. Don't know where the Russian Navy is. We're right now in April, so the weather is still frightful, but... Hmm. Okay, ooh, that would be a good attack. Move you up to there. Let's switch you out here. And they can come up. I know it's just a detachment, but that gives us that place occupied. Yay, we're pushing them back. Now down here we have you badly in, in bad shape. Um, they're going to bombard us with their artillery. Okay, let's swap out the Austrian, we'll reinforce the German. That's next on our push there. at supply levels. Mm, that hex doesn't look good for supply. So we're going to come to there and then see if that proves next turn. No, that is like zero supply there. Okay, well I think what we need to do is Come up here with these guys. Threaten that axis of advance. Okay. 
Yes, the artillery has defensive artillery fire. Yes, of course. Um, I'm going to go a little off topic here, but I think it'd be interesting if they added like a a kill counter or estimated sort of manpower for both sides. You know, sort of like what uh, Gary Grisby had. Yeah. That would not be a bad idea. I don't know how well... I guess you could do it as... Um, I mean, a core makes up like a, a couple 10,000 men. Like, I think it's... Well, like well I, I guess... Yeah, I guess you could sort of do... Um, how many um, strength units are lost per core and then per, per detachment. And then, like, a detachment strength could be equal to... I don't know, a thousand men and a core's um, strength could be equal to 3,000 men or something like that because like 30,000 men in this core or something like that. Yeah, that could be done. Oh man, the snow is really slowing up our advances. Oh wow, he can come all the way up to here. I think we'll do that. Oh good, we got these guys somewhat cut off. We don't want to lose the morale, so we'll just walk up to there. Now here in this fort, oh, that looks like it's just going to be a, a smash. I prefer to fully take that out. And then move that way with you. And you can move there and get that fortress. And you can come, oh, you can come up to here. I will say the German army didn't reach Estonia. They were pretty much in Latvia during this time. Right. No, we we have well pushed beyond uh, anything pre brest litovsk treaty area zones. Well, uh, maybe not including Ukraine for the treaty. Right. Okay, let's flank there. I know we're not going to have good supply. You know I'm a bit reckless, and I know I say this a lot, but you should totally naval invade Crimea. Naval invade Crimea? Well, there's a Russian fleet down here, and all I've got is a freaking um, uh, weak Ottoman fleet, so I'm not like really sure that I should be doing that just yet. If I had a good fleet there, if I, if I had like a good strong Austrian fleet or something, yeah, maybe, but I'm not even sure how much we could do with all of that effectively. Okay, well down here, let's come up to here. I want to cut the railway. Okay. Hmm. Let's come I mean, back. I, yes, but I'm pretty sure Russia have Louder, been louder. <clears throat> the Russians have also been maybe in the Baltic during this time. I'm pretty sure they didn't have a too strong of a... Well, I've definitely uh, seen some, some Russian ships uh, around um, the Sea of Marmara or outside of it, outside the Bosphorus. So I know they're sure there. You, uh, you, uh, if you brought together your Turkish fleet as well and then you did like a sweeping advance, you could probably... Yeah, I don't doubt that that is a um, possibility. Okay, come on. You're heading south. You head to there. Okay, let's see. We have the artillery here. Let's see if we can put them on rails. 24. Don't like that. Oh, damn. We can't even get up to here. Oh, well. Oh. Well, since I did it, I guess we'll move to here. I wanted to come up to here. 
but I guess it's not letting me. We will spend the 11 and get you to there. You come to here. Well, Novograd is within sight. As I'm sure most know, Novograd uh, was its own nation at one point. I mean, obviously there's the whole Muscovy Novograd thing, annexation of that. So Novograd is a pretty important town, in my opinion, or city. Yeah, it probably is. I just don't know how much it, you know, was still of, of uh, importance. I mean, it definitely got neglected after the Russians took over a lot. The pre-Russians, and because they focus heavily on the Saint Peter and the, uh, well, uh, the fleet, Baltic Navy, all that other stuff. Of course, Warm Port Sasa was. That's a bit of a joke in itself. The uh, Saint Peter and the Warm Ports thing. Oh, we could. Maybe sink a part of a light cruiser there. Let's do that. Boom. Um, let's come over here. I don't know how good the Bulgarians are at fighting compared to the Turks in this game. Yeah, um... I think Bulgaria is sort of on the German... Um... Tech? Ooh. Ooh. Bumping into Italians. That would sort of make sense. Because Bulgaria obviously got a good bit of their arms from Germany, and uh, right. the name of the Prussian like the Balkans, you know, they earned that. I'm gonna ask maybe it would be worth it to send a couple Bulgarians who can't do anything on the front if they couldn't go and help the Ottomans. Well. I don't know where we would help the Ottomans with because, and I guess as good good as any time to look here on the Eastern Front, I we're sort of at something of a um, bottleneck here already. They have their artillery in the open there. Yeah, I just get crushed. I mean, they're doing a lot better uh, compared to historically what happened, and that was the Russians completely dominating. The yeah, no, I'm. Qu yeah, quite honestly, I'm. I'm rather um, uh, pleased with what's happening here right now on the on the Russian Russo-Turkish front. So I'm. I'd love to push into Egypt and whatnot, but I'm really just looking if there's any tactical opportunities here. There is a little bit, maybe. I know there's some artillery back there. Oh, I don't know if we should do this. Um, no, I think we'll just continue to um, we'll swap these out, actually. Continue to hold here. Okay, yeah. Swap these guys out here now. Next turn, maybe I'll be able to reinforce those a bit. Um, but if the Bulgarians are like on the German tech, then that means they should be able to do some decent damage compared to the Ottoman forces. Yeah. Um, they might be, but I'm still a little worried about Romania coming in, um, yeah, especially with these. Big. I think they were at like 50% last time, weren't they? Yeah. Well, there may also be events. Um, we can look at diplomacy. Uh, where's Romania? Yeah, fifty-four on there. So they're they're definitely um, a concern. And you're very right because I'm I I don't have a broad front at all down here. Okay. Um, let's move you down here. I definitely would love to get more, get across some of these straits. Uh, what are we looking at? 
looking at here? Well, we could invade. Hmm. I sort of wish there were more events for Africa in this. Yeah. Oh, well, we just saw the event of... Well, hmm. I got that submarine there. Let's see. Can It'd be we be nice knowing what Paul's up to? Yeah, let let a Vorbeck, yeah. Um Okay, you move back, you head back towards Turkey. You guys can't cross there. Um they we could maybe do a naval invasion if we get a little better at what's going on here. You come back to there. You continue to watch there. You come down and help our supply situation there. Yeah, you keep watching. I think generally they've done a good job, but these mountains are just a pain to get through. Okay, yeah, they are. No, I think we'll just stay where we're at. Okay, well, let's... He is moving south to be the commander for Germany in this field. Okay, let's look at our... Um, well, close, actually. Okay, we're going to... Let's form a defensive line here. Okay, destroyer here. Oh, let's come to here. It's an arrow. Destroyer here. Okay. Light cruiser over here. They should have some anti-submarine capabilities. I'll move the... Heavy cruiser, destroyer. Uh, well, come up slightly further up here. Also looking at submarine. Partially what I'm doing is getting so I can get some of these guys back to port. And let's bring in some of the dreadnoughts to and battleships to back up if they bring their big big ships to play we'll have some of ours now he'll come to port here he'll come to this port Battle cruiser up to here. We'll come to this port. Okay, so um, we'll come around to that port. All right. These guys have all moved, and now danger of getting sunk. Just thinking for next turn for rebuilding some of these fleets. Okay, that's good. Um, Germany. We've used up a lot of our MPP. Bulgaria, detachment, artillery. Mm, no, I don't really have the 300 to spend. Fighters, heavy bombers. I like your suggestion. It's just um, not going to be that overly useful. Not that they should be. Okay, maritime bombers for Austria-Hungary. That would be useful, like you also say. So we're going to purchase that to help deal with various I mean, things. Yeah, in common with that recon, it should do great work. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to get some maritime bombers. Um, but you can look and see their um, attack value. Well, against naval, carrier, and sub, reasonably good. So those, those will be nice. I think that's worth spending the money on. 
Let's look at um, research as well, starting with Germany. Mm, no, no, it's good to be on Germany. Okay. To a Hoi Boer campaign, you read the British name, you just make a 2000 naval one. Uh. Okay, logistics, industrial technology, production technology. Okay, for Germany, let's, we could do um, heavy bomber improves. Re, um, Resource attack values for heavy bomber units is also increases 10% chance of inflicting damage on a unit occupying a resource. Okay. If we want to focus on air, we need to do long range heavy bomber. Um. Long range is just good in general, instead, it gives you more spots, which is good. Right. Airship development. Ground attack weapons. Looking for, well, mobility maybe. Aerial warfare. Yeah, we'll do some aerial warfare improvement. I'm looking for some relatively cheap and hopefully useful over the long term. Okay, they're pretty good on logistics now. Let's look at Austria-Hungary. Hmm. I think we could do logistics to help that out some. Increasing the... Uh price that increases the higher chance that it will be researched. Again, I can barely hear you. Speak up a little louder. Like, uh, for Germany, you could have gone one up for tank development. Would that uh, help in the research process? Getting them out quickly? Yeah, um, we already have um, tanks. I, I don't think stacking it doesn't really help um, push it through faster. It just queues it up. So we're doing, for Germany, we've got tank development and armored warfare development, both in development currently. So we're doing that. I don't know that I'm going to focus that for um, Austria-Hungary, just because I think we're going to maybe try to focus tanks for Germany. Um, hmm. Naval weaponry. Oh. Mobility, that yeah, that may help in some of these rough terrains too. So we're going to go with that for Austria-Hungary, I think. Hmm, Turkey. Trench warfare, infantry weapons, infantry warfare. Yeah, let's... Investment training tactical doctor. Well, no, I think maybe production technology. We can afford that, so let's go with that. For Turkey now. Okay, so that'll do that. Logistics also be good for Turkey. We already we've already got um logistics level one for Turkey, so it, it would be good. It is. I just, you know, it definitely got that to help out. We're doing that now for Austria. And we've got level two for Germany already. So yeah, that is definitely thinking it's helping out in these rough environments where there's limited supply. Okay, well, I think, oh, well, let's look up. Okay, we, we need to break through this line here, and I know there's going to be a bunch of ships there, so we're going to try to do that together with both of these guys. When the time comes. Okay, I am desperate to see how all of this is going to work. Um, yeah, this time I have a better cushion for MPP. Okay, let's go with 
Um, let's look on the eastern. Well, let's look for any more reinforcements we should do. Like here, yeah. Oh, we just moved those guys and attacked. Um, I want to see if there's any more frontline reinforcements I should do before. Yeah, I'll max that out. Oh. Did the Eastern Rising happen at all, or is that? Oh, let's. Um, well, nothing's on the map that's happened. Maybe it'll take a couple turns to. It may. Okay, we're gonna watch and see how things go. Okay, insurrection in Belgrade. Uh oh, we got. Oh damn, that's not gonna be good. Arab rise against the Ottomans. Yes, we already know about some of that. Oh, even more. Agent sabotage the mine works at Zongudak or some such thing. I don't know. Yeah, raiders disrupt. Okay. Okay, Agatha Christie works on her first um, Perot novel, The Mysterious Affair at Styles. Scientists report progress on trench warfare for Turkey. Serbian government moves to Belgrade, and now we've got to have a real problem up there. Okay, so the so uh, the Russians, I wanted to say the Soviets, seem like they're disrupting our Swedish convoy, so we've got to go deal with that and go up to Belgrade. And they're going after our Austrian subs. So far, doing okay. No, oh, they can come. Oh, they must have naval dominance or something. That's why they can come across there and we can't. Okay, well, good to know. Oh God, come on, guys! We got to get more people out fighting Lawrence and his crew. They're coming, I know, but we got to get them coming. Time to sit in the armor train. Well, we don't have any of those. I don't think they're in the game. They're way overpowered in Strategic Command World War II. Wait, wait, wait. They should have armored trains. That's like such a big thing. Yeah, but you, again, it goes back to the scale of the action. I don't know that they should have armored trains. They were very important. They were important. I'm not arguing that they're not, but were they equal to a core? I don't think yes. so. I really don't. The, the Russians used a very famous one in World War One. Yeah, they did. I'm not arguing whether they did or didn't. I'm just just arguing about their their effectiveness levels. There's the Russian dreadnought. Well, trust me, they're very effective, and yeah. it'll last all the way. It's a World War II, maybe even past World War II. That's how long that World War One armored train ran on for. Yeah, I, I'm not. I, yeah, you're right, Ari, but I just don't know that. It's the also used it to suppress a lot of revolts actually across their empire. Yes. And on the Western Front, there obviously wasn't that much of the use for armored train because, well. There's right. no man land, they had like no rails there, but it was very important on the more open front. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you, Ari. I'm just going, I don't know if it's equal to the scale of this game. If we were looking at a divisional scale game, that'd be a different matter. But at a core scale, I don't think so. 
Now, I may be wrong. I'm not saying I'm, I'm sure on this. I'm just going, I don't think so. I mean, but then you have a debate, then what's the point of having tanks? Well, I don't know that I don't know that I don't know how much tank should be in this game. And when you talk about an armored core here with this within this game, you know how much um, infantry core is with it. You know how much there's infantry with that armor. Is it just sort of like an um, an infantry core with 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 armor, or is it an armor core without any infantry? You know, just how do you what are you trying to model within the game? I don't know. That caught me off guard. What? I didn't expect what? that. Them not having armored trains. Right. Well, there's a lot of talk that the armored trains are o OP in um, Strategic Command World War Two. Of course they're going to be OP. They're armored trains. They're moving yeah. fortresses. Sweden complains of entente attacks on the merchantmen. Romanian opinion is influenced by Austria-Hungary's difficulty in Serbia. See, that's that was more of the problem I was having. France increases its armed production in the southwest. What I'm worried about here. Okay, Irish Easter rising against British rule. Dublin, boom, boom. Maybe nothing's going to be on the map, just weakened units. Blockade, oh, yeah, okay. Free now. Okay, um, Carl Lubeck and Rosa... Luxembourg make an anti-war speech at Berlin's May Day rally. Lenin calls on socialist meeting in Switzerland to transform the war into a class war. So he's still stuck in Switzerland. Good. Can we send in a, can we send in an, an assassin? Okay, looks like we took out 32 MPP of theirs. Very nice. And some detachments, which we're going to put one here and because i'm worried about things rising up in the east just from now, something a little bit interesting there uh Lenin wanting to make this war about class or socialism is that's sort of what mussolini wanted to do but upon going pro-war he was actually kicked out of the socialist party and that led to the foundation slash him joining the fascists well yeah well he founded the fascists in my opinion okay but let's let's stay a little more on topic then when they're, okay, let's let's see if we can clean up this situation here in Also that uh, Russian spy thing that happened uh, got me thinking about uh, Let me see. I'm just gonna use the stage name because I'm pretty sure I butchered the real name uh, Mata Hari Oh Mata Hari, yeah. yeah A very famous German spy assassinated well not really assassinated executed executed yeah okay well we have to deal with the belgrade insurrection heavy and hard and fast so otherwise it's going to be getting the us or the romanians in the war and i don't want the damn romanians in the war hmm. Oh, good. Oh, good. They moved. So great. Okay. Okay. They can't, but they can. They can cut that off. Um, let's move you to there. You to there. You to there. Well, that's a nice bit of improvement. And my fleet survived. Very good. Okay. Damn, they got Belgrade. Oh. Okay, we're going to have to shift some forces over here that are on rails. That'd be him. Yes, 22 MPP right down to here and that would be him another 22 mpp that i don't effing want to spend but i want to next turn be pounding on him hard um yeah it's not i'm not saying that that's enough enough but that is definitely more
No, they can't attack. No, they can attack surface vessels from the shore if they're right there. Let's... Um, can we swap these guys out? No. Oh, uh, seeing about how Romania thought that Austria was having a hard time in Serbia, see how much likely they are diplomacy-wise to win the war. That might be. Um, Romania fifty-eight instead of fifty-four, so not a big change, but a but a, a not a good change. Let's. Okay, Germany now has seven hundred nineteen MPP, so we're going to invest. Send 50. Oh, wait, you, we could influence Finland. They're 40%. Right. Well, we can also, Have we can do that too. We can do that too. Yeah. You can okay. threaten the St. Petersburg, Finland. Yeah, that's... And then the Russian Stanley would be done. We'll do that. We'll get, we'll get, we'll push on Finland as well. Um, Denmark's at zero. Sweden's at 29. Norway. We'll see about that a little bit later. I don't want to spend too much until we know what we need to deal with. Okay. Um, hmm. We didn't push here. Oh, we can... Reinforce here to max of six. Okay, we'll keep those desert operations going. Okay, we'll move you here. Okay, and we'll get that. Cut off your supply source. They now starting to walk along the desert road. They're just going to rebuild themselves. Okay, you push there. You occupy there. We don't want to lose Medina even for a moment. Now, um, okay. Uh, rail movement for you. Come down to here. There we go. Need more Turks fighting out there in the desert. Okay, that's good. So last turn, I noticed you have like a German maritime bomber in the north that doesn't look like it's doing them. Well, it's mainly um, being ready to attack anything that comes into this area. So it isn't doing a lot. Um, we know we, we see some submarines up here in off Stockholm. I think it's out of their range. And we see the, the dreadnoughts over here, but that's quite a ways away to get it over there so I'm thinking of more of a direct attack if I can um, okay what do we have there are eight so we have um, four and four okay we'll take that exchange okay I knew it was going to be painful Let's move you over to here. Okay, Dreadnought gone. Damage, yes. Let's hunt, okay, well let's hunt the submarine over here. No, nope, he's not there anymore. There he is. Okay, they can't do much. Um... Doing little bits, little hits, good. Sometimes not much of a hit. Do 
they could retreat off. Do we have another? Uh, we can use a light cruiser, so we'll come down here with that. Use the light cruiser to come up here. Uh, nothing really. Dies from attack. Okay, it's just there. Let's. Okay, well, we're pounding on him. That's good. Let's sort of go away from him a little bit so he may run into an unknown ship. You come to port just to be safe and start getting repaired. There we go. That was an moderately successful. Let's come to here. Yeah, we know you're here. Okay. Let's see. Can we get through here? Okay, um, we're going to go sneaky mode, which means we move a lot slower. Come through. Okay, so we're through the blockade. You guys come over here. Okay, well, we're through much of the blockade, getting ready to do another attack there against shipping. Um, hmm. Now, they brought in another British core. Have they not learned? I guess not. And they have a French core down here. Okay, yes, we'll lose three. But then we're going to swap you out here. How many cores have you killed of the French at this point? I've killed a lot. There we go. You must have killed like uh, enough cores to uh, pretty much remove all your dirt. Right, uh, it's. I can't really put a number on it, but it's a very significant amount. Okay. Okay, hopefully, all that artillery was useful. Um, yeah, that one will attack there. Yeah, okay, you have defensive, fine. I just thought of the... If you had a recon plane, and you recon just behind the line, and you got heavy bombs, and you could bomb their artillery. Yeah, well, maybe we should do that now. Let's see. Okay. We're doing it with zeppelins to see if they can do any good. We have our fighters. No, but it did sort of show up. More fighters. I'm not sure how exactly effective Zeppelins are, given yeah. that one shot and they'll probably come. Okay, well, Zeppelins, especially in um, 1916, could fly higher than aircraft could fly. So aircraft can't even get to them. I mean, I'm not doubting that they can fly high. But you just gotta understand, it can't be that effective after all. Anything that pierces, anything, it doesn't matter if it was like just a scratch, they're gonna go down. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Have you ever they're seen the movie Zeppelin? I have not. Okay, your assignment, and there's ways to find things on it. I think it's called Zeppelin, starring Michael. Hold on, let, let's let's see. Um, let me see. Hold on, everyone. Let me. We're gonna look this up for Airy here. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, forgot that. Yeah. Gotta pay more attention as I type these things. Let me get the movie right now. Um. Uh, um, yeah, um, yeah, it's called Zeppelin. This is your assignment. You can even order this DVD for $6.49 on Amazon, but there's other ways to get it. Um, it is starring Michael York and Elkie Summer. Those two are worth watching. Um, on their own. It's called Zeppelin. 
It is set during World War One. It is somewhat or rather fictional, but um, it's about a uh, Zeppelin attack on Britain. So you should it's watch. It's not really a documentary. It's more of a movie. No, it's not a documentary at all. It's a movie. It's starring Michael York and Elkie Summer. Well, that's not really reliable. Well, I'm not saying it's reliable. I'm saying it's a good movie to go watch it. Ah, yes, Kodiak knows it. Okay, yes, Kodiak. I was seeing that. Yes, absolutely. No, that's a that's a, a strong recommendation to watch the movie. It's not that, oh, you're going to learn a lot of good history from it. It's just like, oh, there is, um, you know, a, a movie that you should know about. And they talk about a lot about the Zeppelins. And boom, there goes a British court. And we'll move in the stronger... We can still reinforce these guys. We've moved up. Okay, well, yeah, Kodiak is going, yeah, it's... I would highly recommend the movie if you're into this, into World War I. It's, it's not a great movie. It's a good movie. I mean, there's a difference between good and great. Um, Michael York, back in the day, he was a starred in a lot of good stuff logan's run and other things like that logan run logan's run is an excellent movie with michael york and um jenny agatar um but yeah um yes kodiak you should watch it um you know there's ways to get it whether you may be in i don't know if amazon prime um or netflix or some of those things or there's other things about it it's a movie to to watch and no, it isn't a documentary, but it is a cool movie, and you will learn a lot about Zeppelins I'm and the Zeppelin War. Reading up a little bit about it. Apparently, Zepp, uh, British and French airplanes equipped with uh, incendiary bullets just to shoot them down, which pretty much just made the Zeppelin. Yeah, but they, 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 they go into in the movie, and you, you see the stuff of over, say, a place like London that they are the the british are trying to fly as high as they can literally with their aircraft and they're stalling out because they don't have enough um air pressure and going back down and trying to um yes trying to use tracer bullets to hit it and they show how not all the tracers not all bullets were tracers they weren't always hit going to them but those zeppelins had uh, many gas bags up in there and because when you see the overall zeppelin it looks like one big it's not a blimp it's not that whole thing is not filled with um hydrogen in germany's case it's just an the way you, you see on the outside is just an outside structural skin and then there's a metal framework in there and then inside that metal framework there's a bunch of gas bags and so if they lose say um two or three gas bags the thing still flies now, it can't necessarily with two or three gas bags, you know, lost with all of its bombs on board. So, but presumably they, they've they already been over the target or gotten to the target because you got to remember there is no radar. Um, I haven't watched the 1917. Just in a, okay, just FYI, not, okay, it's not there um, on Netflix or Prime, but it's, there's ways to achieve things. And it may even be, you might even, Kodiak, you might even look and see if it's on um, YouTube just as a free-to-watch thing on YouTube. Because I, I watched it again recently, and I think maybe it was YouTube I watched it on. I don't remember what it was, but I mean, within the last six months, I've seen the movie Zeppelin again. Um, and um, so, you know, you didn't have um, radar, so the Zeppelins would take off and, like, try to be over, say, London or Paris or whatever nightfall kind of thing so um i'm not talking about pirating i'm just talking well, about on it says right here that the bomb accuracy was poor oh it was very poor because they because they tried to go very very high they even had a um the navigation was problematic they they even what they would do is so they would try to be really high up there and so you know wouldn't even see you know you wouldn't even know that they were there until maybe they started dropping bombs and so uh-huh, sure you are. Yeah. No, I'm not advocating piracy. I'm just saying look around, figure it out. Figure it out for yourself. But, so they would go up there. And then they'd also try to stay in clouds. 
so you couldn't see them. But they actually made a little gondola thing that one person would sit in and would be lowered down, say, you know, three, four hundred feet or whatever it was, down out of yeah, the clouds. And then they would have, you know, a um, a telephone type system from the gondola back up to the um, the main zeppelin. And yeah, their their bombing accuracy was um, really, really poor. I'm not trying to say, you know, this isn't this isn't, you know, the Blitz of 1940 over over London. This is like on uh, dead reckoning, supplemented by radio direction finding system of limited accuracy. Yeah, However, and so. I'm not. Widespread and, uh, well, many bombs fell on uninhabited country. Okay, well, I think we want to move one of these railway guns over to here for our future attacks. Because we weren't able to kill this last time. And I want to kill this. Okay, boom. Boom, back. Okay, decent exchange rate. Oh, we should. Oh, yeah, we can't fire this time next turn. Okay. Detachment. Okay, you got your defensive artillery. Boom. Boom. They only have one strength left, so let's swap out with the German Mountain Corps, Rommel's Corps, and more defensive artillery. Yeah, okay. But shattered, there we go, an Italian core shattered. So that's just the kind of thing I want to do. Instead of trying to push forward, instead of trying to um, surround them and have a lot more units in contact, I'm just looking for some... push on these guys that looks favorable, and this doesn't at the moment. Okay, even with that. So let's reinforce him. Only at the one. So yeah, Aries assignment. Watch. Of course, Kodiak or any of you watching later want to watch it. I recommend that movie. It's not great, just good. Okay, I think we can maybe take this. But this is what I want to get. Ooh, that doesn't look good at all. That looks a little better. Um. Yeah, let's come up in here. Ooh, that looks like a, a nice hit on their artillery. Nothing else that'll probably force them to push back some artillery here. Mm, planes are fairly cheap. Yeah, let's yeah, okay, you got defensive. Move up their rear. Mm. Their fighters their interceptors are coming up after our recon bombers, but they're now recon. So our stats are a lot better to chance of hitting. That's going to take into account that during the start of the war they were low to the ground. Like some of them were taken off by infantry shoot. There we go. Push them back. Okay, can these guys get into here? Yes. And they can entrench. So basically what we're going to do is rotate the entrenchment to that, I guess. And they can, en nope, nope. And now they can entrench. Okay. Yeah, that's all right. So we push them back a little bit more here. Now up here. Um, let's get you on the railway. Let's get you up here. Don't know why it's not it's so bad to move through. Let's entrench. Um, no. 
that way I think would be best. Actually, I think the attack is more likely to come from that. Well, no. that direction. Cut those that rail link there, and we've now, with this move, cut rails here. That's good. Well, I think this episode has gone on overly long. I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for liking the videos. If you haven't already, you can uh, please subscribe. And you can also follow me over on um, Twitch. That's Gamer underscore 1745 on Twitch. And maybe be like Kodiak and catch an unscheduled live broadcast. And which, of course, it gives you the chance to interact a little bit more while we play. If it's a good time, so you can over there. And, of course, I love hearing your comments. All of you who go out and watch... Uh, Zeppelin starring Michael York and Elkie Summer. If you don't know who she is, you should. Um, please let me know what you think of the movie down below. See you next time for more historical gaming.